really what, what we see with elite players and, and think about an athlete or any elite player, we see discipline, we see clarity and focus. What is the win? Specifically, what is the win? Not I'm going to run faster, not I'm going to do pretty good, but with specificity, we see the win defined. Right. Right. And then we then there's a discipline that follows that um, in achieving that win. There is a persistence. There is an energy. There is an absolute accountability for doing the things you say you're going to do. Welcome to the Habits to Goals podcast with Martin Grunberg. It's time to take control of your life. Are you ready to achieve goals faster and more consistently than ever before? You need the habit factor. You're listening to Habits to Goals, the podcast that helps you create the habits that lead to success. And here is Martin Grumberg. All righty, here we go. Welcome back. Thank you very, very much for joining me. My name is Martin Grunberg. You have reached Habits to Goals. Today we have a tremendous guest, Miss Holly Green. She is a professional speaker, trainer, and consultant to businesses far and wide. She has a bachelor's in behavioral science and a master's in organizational development. She's absolutely brilliant. I saw her speak many years ago, and I knew I had to... (laughs) <laughs> track her down and bring her onto the show at some point. So this is the point. How are you doing today, Holly? Fantastic. Thank you. Well, you sound great. That's a good start. Um, before we get into the typical format, we tend to kick things off with something known as the GTR, which is the Good Things Report. All right. Uh, as, as the guest, you get to select who goes who goes first you or I I'll let you go first how about that you're a little more experienced at doing it (laughs) well yeah so I was racking my brain you know part of the reason I love this exercise and by the way this originates I'm sure you know as an organizational professional but but this in my mind the GTR the good things report goes way back to Oh, of course, I can't remember his name. Um, mm, I can't remember his name, but it was a practice he preached. He said, every meeting you should kick off with a quick one or two minute, a good thing, instead of everybody just going up and dumping garbage on the conference table, you know, bitching about this and that. And so I've implemented that in our company 15, 20 years ago. It's tremendous and I I carried it over to the show. So okay. The GTR on my end is simply that last week an EO member reached out to me um kind of out of the blue and turns out he's lived in this fairly <laughs> fairly exclusive place and it's called La Jolla Farms. It's it's right above Black's Beach. So very, very exclusive, nice neighborhood. But the reason I'm mentioning this is he was inviting me for a surf down at Black's where he has the key. So it's a private road. It's Otherwise, it's like a 20-minute hike up and down this hill. Um, and so yesterday, we scored just amazing surf. We're in the water by 6 a.m. Oh. And... The second part of the GTR, and this is speaking of plasticity and just learning lessons over and over and over. So I was so worked from that. And then I golfed later. (laughs) This sounds bad. I golfed later in the afternoon. I was wiped out this morning. I, I talked myself into a run by saying, I'm just gonna walk. Anyways, I get back from my run and now I feel 10 times better than I did before the run. And so that's really the second part of the GTR. If it's not the first part, it's that it's, it's kind of pushing through doing things. I, I, I don't know how many times I have to learn this lesson. Um, but I just feel so much better having done my run. So there's your uh, (laughs) all encompassing GTR. 
<laughs> well, I haven't done a run today, but um, <laughs> I live in Denver, Colorado, and for those of us that uh, know the Midwest, our spring comes a little bit later than everyone else. I know in California, in your area, you're in perpetual spring, but uh, ours comes a little later. So today I had some beautiful flowers just starting to bloom. And I thought that was pretty symbolic of kind of this rebirth of the next normal and, uh, you know, getting back into a, a different groove, but certainly a groove that will be a little more comfortable as a business owner. It is symbolic, isn't it? And uh, I have a few, a few friends out in that area, and and yeah, they're <laughs> the photos they share. Uh, it's like it's freezing in the morning, and then it's uh, you know it's ninety in the afternoon, and um, it seems that the weather is very weather like out there, but. But I love that GTR, and it does sound very symbolic of this, what you're calling the, the next or the new normal. I love it. Yeah. Uh, so before we get into some of these other questions, help us by taking the audience back to Holly back in <laughs> Holly in high school. Where, you know, where'd you grow up? What, what uh, high school did you go to and that sort of thing? Kind of weave your way into your, your college and your studies. And then that, that brings us somewhere closer to present time and the, and the great things you're doing now. Okay. Well, I'll go back a little further. I was born in Tachikawa, Japan. So we moved wow. around a lot. I was a military brat and we moved around a good bit as a child, but I uh, ended up in high school in at, just outside of Atlanta, Georgia uh, at Southwest DeKalb High School. And uh, that was during the time of a school integration. So it was a interesting time and certainly learned a lot and, uh, you know, had some great experiences then. So um, I did, I went to college right out of high school, but did not finish. I got married very early to my high school sweetheart and then started working full time and went back to college um, over the course of the next, I don't know, four or five years. Um, mm -hmm. So I did both my undergrad, finished my undergrad and did my master's of science degree while working full time. And then, of course, continued on in uh, postgraduate work in neurophysiology. So, and I've continued to explore neurophysiology today, and uh, we'll always be learning in that space. There's just so much we're we're just it's such a dynamic and evolving uh, field, and we're just really in the infancy, of beginning to understand the adult brain. So. I've worked for some of the world's best companies. I worked for the Coca-Cola company. I worked for AT&T. I worked for Dell Computer. So I had some incredible early um, great work experiences. And then I did startups and, uh, you know, just have really scanned across, spanned across a lot of industries. Um, and it's, uh, my, I think my parents thought I couldn't keep a job, but it was... <laughs> Yeah, I found that I got bored fairly easily, and uh, so I was always kind of exploring new things and, and being willing to do a completely different role. Interesting. Uh, so that's just fascinating, fascinating spectrum of uh, experiences there. And what what led you to physiology and and kind of what, what was your inclination do you think towards behavioral sciences and that sort of thing um well to behavioral sciences just because i was in the workforce and realized that there's so much going on that really can't be explained by logic <laughs> or rational thought right um, and neurophysiology i really got very very interested in that um i finished my graduate degree when i was with the coca-cola company and, you know, one of the things I learned there is, again, was very, very clear on there's not much logic or rational thought to adult humans, particularly at work. Mm -hmm. And at the same time, I was invited to sit on the board of a startup at the time of, of a company that was formed by former Top Gun fighter pilots. And I was absolutely enthralled with the differences um, between what a group of former Top Gun fighter pilots, how they 
worked and how we tended to work at the Coca-Cola company. And that's what got me really into neurophysiology and beginning to understand more about the brain at work. And it's a field that um, has really not been explored extensively from a brain perspective. It's explored primarily from a psychology and mostly dysfunctional perspective versus the functioning human. So when you think about people like Peter Drucker, or, you know, some of the uh, just real um, previous, I guess, heroes almost in management and leadership and work, everything they wrote about presumed the human was logical. We would show up at meetings on time. We would all be prepared. We would do what we said we were going to do. And I just didn't find that to be the case at all. Mm. So through that initial experience with the uh, former Top Gun fighter pilots, I began working with some other elite sectors uh, initially in the military. And then that expanded to um, Olympic athletes, to musicians, to senior NFL referees. So others who were truly elite at what they do, and I've always kind of thought my magic power, if you will, if I have a, if I had a cape. Um, <laughs> and you do, by the way. <laughs> I've seen it. <laughs> it's taking what I see in other sectors and applying it more broadly and in a palatable, digestible way so that all of us can adopt and adapt well. behaviors that will serve us well. So, uh, just, this is, cool. this is coming way, way out of the blue. I gotta know, people are going to think I'm crazy. Your astrological sign, like what, what, what's your uh, birthday? <laughs> I'm a Capricorn. Interesting. Like right on the edge, pretty close to Aquarius. Yeah. Ah, yeah. You sound like an Aquarian to me. Um, <laughs> Which is crazy. So, all right. So, I I don't typically do this, but I'm so fascinated myself. Talk a bit, um, if you don't mind divulging. When okay, so we're not logical. I've I've kind of always maintained uh, that very thesis as well. But but when you say Top Gun fighter pilots were doing it this way, and and at Coca Cola or other management teams were doing it this way. Can you, do you mind sharing like two or three things that, that how, how they uh, compare and contrast, please? Sure, sure. Um, and it wouldn't be specific to Coca-Cola. It really is sure. an almost, you know, right. Just, common pop startups. It doesn't matter. Um, really what, what we see with elite players and, and think about an athlete or any elite player, we see discipline, we see clarity and focus. What is the win? Specifically, what is the win? Not I'm going to run faster, not I'm going to do pretty good, but with specificity, we Hi. see the win defined, right? right? And then we then there's a discipline that follows that um, in achieving that win. There is a persistence. There is an energy. There is an absolute accountability for doing the things you say you're going to do. And just sadly, most days at work, that is just not the case. We make <laughs> meetings, we commit to things, we never follow through. You know, we nod our head at the boss because that's what we think we're supposed to do, but we have no intention of really doing it. Blah, 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 blah. Wow. Um, and it's not that we're bad people or that we have malintent. It's just the norms and the standards are fairly dramatically different for people who work really, really hard to just not lose. And that's what most work is, just not losing most days. Versus uh, elite performers play to win. And there's a very big gap between those two things. So, uh, God, I'm just like kicking myself uh, for not having you on two years ago. <laughs> or three years ago. I, I just love everything you just said. And I want to break down a couple of things, kind of reemphasize some themes. The first is highly specific, great clarity. Um, yeah. And then, and there was a time, I, I'm not going to repeat it all. And then the second, and by the way, there's, there's an upcoming, there's been many podcast episodes that aren't interviews about that, but there's another one simply, <laughs> simply called, what do you want? So 
I just clarity. And then the, the other one you said, I love the, the verb norms and standards. So we did another one. Uh, I don't know, half a year ago, just about standards, maybe a year ago, standards. When, when you have a different standard, right? You're saying, if I'm reading you correctly, these, these pilots, these elite athletes, whatever, they, they have a different standard than what was going on in, in maybe, you know, X company or, or Y business with general management. Mm -hmm. Well, think about it for just a moment. If we if we look at elite military, yep. the standards are pretty dramatically different because lives truly are at risk, yours and others. Right. Right. So that that creates a whole different way of thinking and whole different levels of accountability. Now, you know, you're not going to have that in a typical workplace, except for around safety, perhaps with machinery or something like that. Um, but if I think about it with athletes, um, you know, the standards are they're competing with the best. They're exposed to the best day in and day out. They're measuring against the absolute best in the world. Mm. And so again, that creates a very different way of thinking and a way of measuring ourselves. Well, and, and importantly, the environment. So all of a sudden, the environment's very different. <laughs> yep. If if they're if this is their standard and they're surrounded by this sort of excellence, um, not a lot of options to do anything other than that. And and I think that's why um, so many people are always saying, you know, take a good look around it, your environment, and that's active and passive. <laughs> you know, it's everything from the poster on the wall to the music you're listening to, the the friends you have. So. Um, yeah. Another great theme. Thank you for bringing that up. Awesome. Keep going. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, what was the second uh, thing that you sort of wanted to play around with? Well, uh, yeah, you, you, uh, you know, again, just to reemphasize a couple points, I wanted to, to cut you off and I apologize, but, but you're just kind of running through the list of, of, you know, these elite performers versus the way 85% of the population does things. And it's everything from the standards they're setting to the accountability, to the discipline, to the clarity, uh, to the environment. And I know I only asked for two or three and you've, you've given me six plus. So if there's anything else you want to comment on or we'll, we'll keep moving, but I absolutely uh, am, am grateful for the insight. It's awesome. No, I would say the only other thing I would add to that list is that's important. And there are literally hundreds of things probably on that list. But if I just think about the top, top sort of ones, um, reward and punishment is also crucial. You know, if we wow. step back and look at what are we really rewarded and punished for at work versus what our elite performers in any space rewarded and punished for, we'd see some pretty dramatic differences very quickly. All right, just a quick time out. I want to make sure you know about the free habit tracking slash building template that I will send to you right away. All you have to do is text 33444. That is 33444 and simply text the word habits. That's right. Habits, H-A-B-I-T-S, to 33444, and I'll get you your free habit tracking slash building template right away. Now let's get back to this amazing interview. Um, I, this is a bit nuanced, but I want to, I want to go there for my own clarity. I, I tend to see that real elite and I could be totally wrong, performers, their reward is, is very, uh, and again, I could be totally wrong, but in some cases, it's extremely intrinsic. It's, it's their self-motivation to prove somebody wrong, to do something, to prove to themselves that they could do something. I don't know if I'm barking up the wrong tree here, but, but a lot of times it's not for the big paycheck. 
No, and I think that's the saying that work. That one probably cuts across. I mean, I can think back of my own career in jobs where I had a manager or a boss who, you know, did not know how to give feedback, certainly never um, right. rewarded the right behaviors or the right efforts, et cetera. And, um, you know, so you have to find that within yourself. You have to know, I, I put in everything I had, I delivered what I was supposed to, et cetera. So that's probably fairly similar depending on, the motivation of the individual, but just think about overall uh, more cultural or structural reward and punishment. You know, when, when it's okay in meetings for someone to speak up uh, and that gets rewarded, even though the person with the better idea is ignored or, you know, uh, it's rewarded to be in your office from 8 a.m. until 5 p.m. Uh, and look busy, even though you're playing you know, or you're looking at grumpy cat videos. So, uh, <laughs> you know, it's, uh, so there's a, there's some different layering, I think, on how we think about rewards and systemic rewards in different ecosystems. Interesting. Yeah. I, okay. Well, and that makes perfect sense. I, I thought you were going, I mean, sometimes I think, uh, the majority of the population and, and I certainly was, Without digging deeper, you, you just look at the super famous athlete and you're thinking, well, they're just doing it because they're going to win millions of dollars in a prize fight. And then it turns out that had nothing to do with it. You know, there are all various other motivations. Um, but anywho, perfect. So now the beauty is this, Holly. The audience knows and hears and senses your absolute expertise. Uh, so let's get into a few of these other questions, please. On your road to, and I'm using air quote success, mm -hmm. and by the way, I'm going to circle around to that anyways, um, there have been some very tough days, I'm guessing. So I, I'd like to ask this question, what, what sort of tools do you use personally like when you go into your mental toolbox to to get through rough, tough, bad days, weeks. I had one guest say, "You know what? So <laughs> sometimes these days are are years." Um, so, what what does Holly Green do in in a case where she's being challenged? That's a great question. So I think uh, a couple of different answers. It sort of depends on the type of challenge and the magnitude of it, et cetera. But sure. I think surrounding yourself with supportive people. Um, one of the things interesting with the adult human that we do not believe exists in the brains of animals and plants and whatever um, is that we have something called cognitive fusion. In other words, we can think something and our brain presumes and behaves as if it is fact, not that it's just a thought. And this is why we can watch a scary movie and get, uh, you know, be afraid, even though we're, we know we're not in any danger or why we could cry at a Hallmark movie. Right. Right. <laughs> it, it really helps us with empathy, which is a very good thing. And on the flip side of that coin, if your, your self-talk is insanely important. And so if you're saying to yourself, I, I'm a failure, I'm never going to be able to do this. This is the worst day of my life, etc." Your brain does not know that that's not true, that it, it's not a fact. And so then you move into what's known as rumination, where you process that over and over and over again. Well, that creates neural pathways, just like a good habit creates neural pathways. Right. Okay, so the, the thing that I try and do, um, and I can tell you there are certainly times when I'm not as successful at it as others, goodness knows, but is remind myself um, kind of what you were referring to a little bit earlier about, you know, the great thing today. It's called appreciative inquiry. What can I learn from this? What's the silver lining? Is there some way I can turn this into something more positive? Is there someone I can help right now to, to meet a need I have to help others? And prompting ourselves is an insanely powerful way to refocus quickly. The You cannot not answer a question. That's just the way we're structured. And questions excite us and energize our brains. So you got to make them good. And that's the key thing that we're never really taught is how to do that, how to shift so that we, we 
change perspective, which we do a lot on a normal day to day, but to do it intentionally. And that's, that's what I practice. Visuals are very powerful. As you said earlier, um, that's the fastest way to prompt your brain. So visuals can be powerful. Um, but your self-talk probably is the most powerful tool of all. I just, I love it. So cognitive fusion. And then the question becomes, because you're, you're saying self-talk is the, the tool. Do you subscribe? Do you advise, consult, train people with either affirmations or mantras? Um, is that, part of your uh, tool, tool set, so to speak? I, yeah, I think secretly sometimes. Remember, I'm, I'm working primarily in the business sector, and so we try to turn <laughs> right. into, yeah, you. You know, into palatable business language. <laughs> right. Um, they, may, they may ship you out on a uh, – right. I get it. Okay. Yeah. But so, self-talk is – I'm just, just me and you uh, throwing sentences around here, words. They – the idea is self-talk is self-talk. So I'm, I'm uh, more and more subscribing to this, in the significance, the importance of this idea of, I mean, affirmation sounds a little fruity, perhaps, but but really the the it's the same thing. It's a mantra. It's self-talk. It's this. You're repeating these these positive. Uh, phrases, sentences, ideas over and over, and thereby, super important, you're blocking out <laughs> that negative self-talk because there's only so many things you can process at a single moment in time. So I was just curious what your experience was with, with affirmations and mantras. So, so here's the thing. With, um, with mantras and affirmations, there has to be some basis in reality. Because your brain, you know, it can hold, it, you have the ability to have cognitive dissonance. In other words, if you're standing in a b burning building and you're right. just, you know, saying to yourself, this is going to be I'm going to live, I'm going to live, I'm going to live. Right. Yeah. So that cognitive dissonance is, is crucial. So it's the, it's kind of the informed, optimistic realist is what, you, <laughs> right. is what you're trying to get to. Um and there's, there's a balancing act around that, right? So, again, the questions tend to be a little better prompt than a mantra. Got it. Um, a mantra can calm us. That's a good thing because it becomes familiar. So, the, the, don't get me wrong. There's, there's advantages to it as well. Um, but around the self-talk, here, here's what I, what I coach people to do. Talk to yourself as you would a trusted, loved, and respected friend. Right. If, if what you're saying to yourself is not something you would say to a trusted, loved, respected friend, you've got to shift your self-talk. Yeah. 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 There's, there's a side discussion we, we could have. I don't want to derail this, but that's, that to makes total absolute sense. Absolutely. And, so, and, and, and you couple that with questions. Questions are a better prompt to our I mind. love that yeah. sentence. You cannot not answer a question. We, we did, we did an entire episode on que it's just called questions. Mm -hmm. um, so absolutely brilliant. So that's those are the tools you're using. Help me help us understand if 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 you would how you define success. Um I define my success for myself and my company as helping others be more successful. Um, and that's what I'm passionate about. It's what I love to do. Um, and so, you know, th there are other measures personally around a healthy family life with my husband and my children and our pets and, right. you know, and, and a strong faith and financially. So I tend to look at it kind of in categories, if you will, around faith, family, friends, fitness, and then business as a, as a sort of a, even though my business is very, very much part of my family, my husband and I work together. Uh, my daughter periodically does projects for us. So it's, it's, these, all these things are woven very tightly. And that's the, we've intentionally created that. Beautiful. Yeah, so, it's a holistic uh, approach, if you will. Yeah, I don't, I don't know that there's such a thing as balance. Um, I think there's such a thing as creating what you want. And what works for you and um, 
those that are important to you. And that's what we've done. Our, our when we're still working on it, my goodness gracious, every single day, right? You, yeah. you, that's, that's lifelong learning. <laughs> uh, <laughs> so, yeah, with respect to balance, just because you brought it up, my, my take is, um, and has always been, and we've talked about that, and that's been the topic many times, is, is balance is not a moment in time. You know, if you're a tightrope ro- walker, you're constantly making adjustments. So if things are strong over in this category, then chances are you're going to have to move over to another category later. And and it's very dynamic. It's it's not, balance is not a static uh process if you will or outcome um all right well that brings us to and again these are some of the routine questions i love to ask our guests as it relates to habits and goals and success um two or three of the the best habits you have you're willing to share oh boy that's a good one (laughs) I think um, the the most powerful for me, and again, it's something I encourage all of our clients to use, is start your day, the first three minutes of your day, set a timer and think about of what I do today, what will move me, my team, my organization, perhaps closer to winning. Mm. What must I do? What can wait? And what can I delegate? And really focus, three minutes is a long time to pause and think in today's world. And if you really focus on that, you'll find that's one of the best time management principles that you can employ. That is um, so and, good. And prompt your brain, you know, continuously throughout the day on that. Is this, is this moving us closer to winning? And if not, why in the heck am I doing it? Beautiful. However, however you define winning, obviously you have sure. to define the win with specificity first. That's right. Um, well, that's beautiful. So I'm going to consider that one. You mind sharing uh, one or two more? Oh, I think another habit that that serves us well, and I've been married for 37 years now, is uh, <laughs> is use humor. Whatever it is, use humor. Um, it diffuses almost any potentially volatile situation. It resets your brain. It refocuses you um, with joy. So um, we use a lot of humor in our family. Great. Um, oh, you know, I, <laughs> I, I don't think I commented. You posted a very interesting little joke. I think it was yesterday or the day before. Some, <laughs> some girl in her Twinkie, and I'll leave it at that. But uh, <laughs> well, uh, and it's, it's one of the things I've been doing for the past month is kind of just giving a chuckle for the day. You know, just right. well, being fun or hey, something. It worked. You know, that's uh, it, because I brought, we need that right now. These are tough times and they are this, the sort of unexpected mass change we're going through right now globally is exhausting to our brain. It is absolutely exhausting to live in ambiguity and uncertainty. And so, <laughs> you know, just, wow. yes. each, each of us can do little things, right? So that's just my very, very, well. very little thing. I love the phrase. I don't think I've heard it put like that, but use humor. It's it's uh, it's brilliant, fantastic. I because you're just a natural at this and so good. I'm gonna press you for one more, please. Um, I would say the other one is just get outside. Oh. Um, whether it's a short walk, whether it's a run, whether it's you know working in your garden, whether whether it's sitting on a porch or a deck or whatever it is, but just get outside a little bit. Um, First of all, sunlight is helpful for us, uh, you know, from a variety of perspectives, but also just from our brain and our circadian rhythms, et cetera. So, you know, it's a little simple thing that you can do. And I can tell you right now, while I'm not traveling, because normally I'm traveling four to five days every week, um, it's easy to, you know, I could sit at my desk all day working on researching, writing, all those kind of, I mean, I'm just having right. to really force myself, even if it's just 10 minutes here and five minutes there, um, that has a re-energizing um, ability for us. Yes, I love that. I mean, I'm almost to the point of where, I don't want to say yelling, but 
close to my kids. I just got to get them out of their room and out in the sun. So I love it. All right. How about, and some guests <laughs> don't answer this one. Not so good habits, a uh, habit you may be trying to uh, kill or at least tame. Uh, I probably drink too much wine. Oh, there you go. <laughs> My wife would say that is no problem. At yeah, exactly. So I don't know if that's really a bad one. And I'm definitely <laughs> not, I'm definitely not committed to. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Not so, such great specificity and clarity there. Um, how about just another question. If you could go back and talk to Holly 20 years ago, 15, 20 years ago, what, what sort of, advice might you give younger Holly? Oh, that's a great one. I think um, to let more things probably roll off my back early mm -hmm. on, I think mm -hmm. um, in particular the first 10 years maybe of my career, I think that would be, you know, just, just go with the flow a little more and, and uh, focus more on what you can learn from it versus being, you know, upset, frustrated, anxious about something. Got it. Well, that's a good one. So you feel like you were maybe pressing a little in your career, expecting uh, certain sort of results or different things, different outcomes? I think, yeah, I think I just put a lot of pressure on myself Got it. Um, to achieve, you right. know, and uh, whatever that meant. And I think as you mature and grow and have different experiences, you know, you're able to sometimes round that out a bit. Interesting. Thank you very much. So we're already, this has flown by. Um, we're approaching home base here. We're about to button it up with a few, few last questions. Um, how about like favorite or transformative two or three books that you, you would absolutely recommend? to others or gift to others? No question. Thinking fast and slow by Daniel Kahneman, which is sort of the seminal work in behavioral sciences. Um, I, I'm constantly recommending that from a personal perspective. I read about four books a week. So I do love to read across almost every kind of genre and type of book and historical fiction and uh, you name it. So um, one of my very favorites for a very, very long time is called liberation of one. It's by Romald Spasowski. He was at the time the highest ranking communist to defect to the United States from Poland. So it's just a fascinating life journey. Um, it is nonfiction. Uh, you know, so. Liberation. Now, was he an athlete or some sort of. No. Mm -mm. Uh, he was just a, an everyday average Joe. <laughs> well, you know, I, I would say he was a high ranking government official. OK, got it. Sorry, I was thinking. Oh, yeah. I was thinking along. Whenever I think of uh, people defecting, it's usually not a government official. It's it's usually an athlete. So my mind went straight there. I'm sorry, oh, God. Okay, no, that's fine. Um, you know, so other than that, I mean, I could go through dozens and dozens and dozens of just authors and books and genres, and I I really really enjoy reading. Um, and like I said, I, I try to force myself to read even things I think I might not like, um, just to explore different, different avenues. Right. Well, it certainly comes across, uh, <laughs> just, just in your, uh, I want to call it a presentation today. Your, your interview today has just been fantastic. All right. A tech tool website some sort of tech gadget other than the phone itself that you kind of cannot live without? Oh, I would say a site that I love is Pixabay. Um, those are royalty free images and I use imagery, almost all photography in all of my presentations and keynotes, etc. So that's a, just an incredible, the, the, the talent there is stunning um yeah that's pixabay right yep 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 p-i-x-a-b-a-y yeah it's beautiful um 
I'm just trying to think, you know, other than all of the standard kind of stuff that everyone uses these days. I, I don't know that I can really. Yeah, no, that's a point. Some people say, look, they, they're not tech heads. Other people are just like right off the cut. They're like, I use this app every day or I use this website every day. Or It's, it's you know, it's hit or miss. Don't, if if nothing's top of mind, that is okay. Yeah. Fix a bay is great. Um, so before we wrap it up, there are two things we want to do. I want to give you the opportunity for some final kind of comments or words around your your work and expertise, hopefully encouraging type words for the listener. And then let us know if there's, I mean, I believe it's humanfactor.biz, but if there's any, you know, book promotion or anything you're promoting, we will link to your website, but but please share that as well. So the floor is yours. Well, um, yep, yeah, certainly. There are a lot of, you know, free resources in the store on the humanfactor.biz. I was just looking to see if I could figure out the page where we hid, I will get it to you. I recently did a 45 minute webinar on thinking and thriving in trying times. And it's appropriate even for children 12 and older. Um, right. Just how does our brain work and what are some very specific techniques we can all use, um, you know, to stay positive and focused and be even more resilient right now. And recognizing the phases that we go through and that we're not going to just suddenly you know, on Monday, when stores start opening up, um, we're not suddenly going to magically be able to switch back or switch on. So, um, you know, certainly I encourage people to take advantage on, of that. You can find it in my stream on LinkedIn or on Twitter, or um, I will get you the link. So when you post this, you'll have the specific- Yeah, that'll be terrific. Your, your site does have amazing, uh, really, it seems like a ton of free tools. So Yep. Uh, And we're redoing a lot of that right now. Uh, Just refreshing. You know, that's what we are taking this time to do is go back, refresh, rewrite. So, you know, we'll be ready in a few more weeks to kind of launch a whole new thing, but uh, the tools will all still be there. Um, I just, I operate with an abundance mentality. I think there's enough to go around for all of us and let's support one another. And uh, I love helping organizations and teams and leaders be even more successful. And And I do that. And that's what you do uh, in an excellent fashion. So the the website is thehumanfactor.biz. Right. And And the other other website I'll mention um, is managementdevelopmentinstitute.org. And that is our online one-year curriculum for becoming an elite manager. Uh, Mm -hmm. where we apply, you know, all some of the principles we've talked about here, plus many, many more. So so we're actually enrolling a new cohort right now. So I think if you register for that before the end of April, then there's a discount coupon or something in there. So hopefully it's before uh, the end of May. (laughs) Sorry. Yeah, I said April. Yes. Well, not only that, I, I actually, because we're in between seasons, I may be holding this something you and I should have gone through before, but this may not air for a while. So uh, okay. but I'm going to, every link you give me, I'm going to hang off the, the show notes and, you know, look, it's every time I chat with you, this, this is what prompted me after our last call. I'm like, I gotta, I have to interview her. She's amazing. <laughs> so it was, it was highly educational, highly enlightening and highly entertaining. With that, you have uh, the opportunity to, to sign off and say goodbye to the audience. Well, thank you so much for having me. It's, it's a pleasure chatting with you. And, uh, you know, anyone wants to reach out, please do that. And I'm happy to chat. Or if I've got a tool or a tip or a technique I can share with you, I'm more than happy to do that with any of your listeners. That's wonderful, Holly. Again, I'll, I'll share when, when we're going to air this and uh, make sure... Of course, you're in the loop on that, and then we'll have all the links. So hang on after we say goodbye. I just want to say a final few words to you. Um, All right. Bye-bye, audience. See ya. (laughs) 
Today's episode is brought to you by Audible.com. There are over 180,000 titles to choose from. If there's one thing I know, and I think Jim Rohn was the one who said this originally, in five years, the difference in your life will be largely based upon two things, the books you've read and the relationships you have fostered. Doesn't it make sense to take advantage of the downtime, whether you're on the road, on a run, in the gym, kill a couple birds with one stone, get a book going? It's phenomenal. It's I, The more people I turn on to it, the more uh, compliments I get. Not that I've actually done anything. 180,000 titles to choose from. You get one free book a month, 30% off any other book. Again, check it out. Audibletrial.com forward slash habits to goals. I'm going to say that again real quick. Audibletrial.com forward slash habits to goals. And that is the number two. And of course... When you support our sponsors, you are supporting the show. So thank you again. I am extremely grateful. We'll see you at the next episode.